Hello and good afternoon to everyone that is currently tuned in live with us on another episode of Philip Trading Podcast. I'm your host for today and my name is Trent. Uh, with me here today is David Ng, a proprietary trader from Iceberg Ads in Amberhat. How are you today, David? Hi, I'm good. Uh, how are you? Good, same too. Okay, so in this podcast, we will be talking about the trading teams for this week and also share how traders can position themselves for the week. So I would like the help of all our audience here, our below audience today, to share this video to all your friends. Okay, the more people that are watching this video, the more we are motivated to deliver greater content to all of you. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into our topic for today. So we'll be discussing on the topic: What's next for palm oil market in 2021? If you have any question, you can message in the comment box below. As the palm oil future prices continues to trend higher at the beginning of 2021, we will be discussing the key factors driving the palm oil market and how should investors position themselves in 2021. So David, from your point of view, what are the key factors that had contributed to the rise in Malaysia crude palm oil prices from the 2000 ringgit per metric ton level to a high of 3800 ringgit per metric ton in the past six months? Yeah, uh, okay. Um, I think if we just look at the prices uh, dynamics, I think yes, rallied tremendously last year. Uh, and obviously, with uh, pandemic into the picture, we have seen prices actually went uh, to as low as 2000 uh, in the beginning of last year. Um, I think there's a couple of factors as, and we have seen a very rapid recovery in the second half. I think there's a couple of factors actually leading to it. Um, I think the major factor will be we have seen uh, fundamentals to be playing out very well. We have seen lower production, we have seen lower stocks in Malaysia. Uh, and I think those factors actually drive prices uh, eventually to three, above 3,000. Uh, and obviously also, uh, if we just look at some of the figures uh, from MPOB, uh, especially the second half, uh, you can see some of the exports, uh, you know, uh, actually, especially coming in demand from China and India actually pick up. So that causes uh, prices to actually sustain at a very strong level. Um, and coupled with the fact that we have seen soybean prices also been rallied, uh, especially on the second half. So I think those uh, are the key factors that actually drive prices higher. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, uh, we have seen weather issues also in the late, uh, late, April, late October, November period last year. Um, so I think all these factors combined causes the price rally from 2000 to what we are seeing right now to, to levels like 3008 uh, levels. Oh, yes, I agree with your view. So basically the low level of palm oil supply coupled with a rec recovery in demand definitely had pushed prices up in the past six months. Okay, so for our next question, I reckon many of our audiences will be interested to know. Do you think this uptrend will continue in 2021 and why do you think so? Uh, wow, I think that's, that's a very pertaining question um now if you if you just look at prices today um you know we, we this time we just talk as high as four thousand uh for some of the contracts uh and i think it softened quite a bit i think these two days we have seen prices from as high as three thousand eight even to soften to about three thousand four as what you're seeing uh right now i think the concern immediate concern for the market is where exports are going to go where the demand is going to come um i think that that'll be very important and that will play out um, so I think what one of the key factors that you know, uh, we should really watch out is demand. Uh, is demand going to sustain? Keeping in mind, uh, last year we have uh, zero tax for six months. So that's actually very beneficial for demand. So that's why demand has been picking up, uh, especially late last year. Now, this year, 2021 is slightly different. Uh, we have seen the government starting imposing the export tax in Malaysia. Um, with as high as 8%, that's actually quite high and it's making Malaysia CPO less competitive compared to Indonesia. Um, so I think, I don't know, on the demand picture, it's going to be quite weak. Uh, now, the always the key thing is production, how production is going to play out. Um, if we just look at some of the numbers, I think a lot of market forecasters are saying that the first quarter and second quarter this year, is production is still going to be quite low. Um, and for the fact that if you just look at the trend itself, January, February, March, those are the periods where production generally tend to be a bit uh, on a weak side. Now coming April, May, that's where production tend to pick up. So I think the key things that we need to watch out is demand. The first thing, whether demand can still sustain. Judging from those numbers you are seeing from some of the estimates, 
uh, is unlikely to sustain in the near term. Uh, and obviously, going forward, how production is going to play out. So many, many forecasters are looking at production to probably start to pick up around second or third quarter. That's where you will see prices tend to soften. Um, so right now, we are in the first quarter of the year. Uh, I think you know, fundamental is still quite supportive. Um, production doesn't seem to show a pickup. Uh, obviously, the, you know, the key determining factor is always the demand right now. So demand has been quite soft uh, for the past couple of weeks. Um, so let's see whether as we head towards the Chinese New Year, whether China is going to pick up on their purchase. Uh, and you know, as we na- navigate into the second and third quarter, I think production is going to be a very important picture to, to be focusing on. Okay, then we shall see how the palm oil market will perform in the coming second and third quarter of 2021. And let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, yep. so the next question from a technical perspective, what do you think are the next key resistance and support levels for the BMD crude palm oil? Yeah, yeah okay, from technical point of view, um, we have seen prices rally to as high as um, 3,009 to 4,000 ringgit, uh, you know, especially on the front month contracts. Uh, obviously, they have come off those levels. They have come off high. Um, I still think the three thousand nine hundred mark is still achievable in the short term. Um, obviously, the trend you are seeing right now in the past couple of days, we probably see a softening in terms of prices. Uh, whether that will continue, I would say is highly unlikely because the fundamentals are still pointing you a very uh, bullish picture. Uh, and I think a point to take note is obviously look at the demand side because demand is telling you that you no know, things are not that rosy. So crucially, it's for us to watch how demand is going to play out for the month of January. Uh, but I still think the 3,900 mark is still a mark that we have to watch out in terms of prices. Um, I think that will be your immediate resistance. Uh, obviously, you know, um, those level, you know, we are talking about four or 500 ringgit difference. Um, so I think 3,009 is still a, a target to hit. And before we reach your 3,009, I think 3,750 is an important resistance. We have crossed that, uh, I think on Monday, uh, and now we stay below that resistance level. So I think the immediate resistance is still at 3,750 and ultimately the 3,900 target is where we are looking at in terms of resistance. Um, now on the support side, uh, obviously you have breached 3,700, 3,600 3, level just two days ago. Um, I think the key support level in the next level will be 3,002. Um, if it does break that, and I repeat again, it does break that with conviction, that means with huge volume, um, it's trying to indicate the market is actually turning this trend. Um, it's trying to head down south. Um, that possibly could spell a downtrend in the CPO market. Um, right now, I'm still seeing a bit of retracement. It's a healthy retracement given the massive rally they are seeing in terms of prices. Um, so I still maintain 3002 as you know, a key important uh, support level. You know, if it does break that, um, then I'm still looking at 3000 level uh, as the next key support. And obviously, if it does break that, CPU is clearly on a downtrend and you hit lower than 2008 uh, in, in the longer term. Um, obviously, these levels uh, is achievable this year. Um, I'm still looking at average for this year in terms of prices at 3003. Um, so obviously, prices will, will probably hit down south above the 3, 000, below the 3000 mark, probably in uh, third or fourth quarter, given that production will tend to pick up. You know, we will see higher stocks in coming months. So these are some of the negative factors that may come on stream in the market and may actually press down prices lower. So as the trader, I think we, we just have to watch out on what are the fundamental developments that's coming to the market uh, in the near term. Yeah, let's see how the market will behave at the immediate resistance of uh, the one they mentioned, 3,750 level and also the yep. immediate support of uh, 3,200 level. Okay, so yes. let's move on to our next question. And an interesting one. Uh, so the BMD, FCPO, and uh, Chichago Board of Trade Soybean Oil spread had narrowed in a steady downtrend from a discount of $100,000 US dollar to a premium of one US dollar in the past six months. What had contributed to the narrowing of the spread and will it remain narrow at the current spread levels in the long run? Um, okay, th- this is a very good uh, and great question. Um, uh, it, as a trader, you, in a palm oil market, we always observe the relationship between um, the BMD FCPO against the Chicago uh, soybean oil uh, as, as a spread, as a relative analysis. Um, so obviously last year, you know, it proved to be a tremendous year for CPO market. Uh, again, it's not only limited to CPO market. If you just look at grains market as a whole, you look at wheat, you look at corn, you look at soybean, 
majority of these greens market has actually been performing very well last year. Uh, I think the major fundamental reason that that causes you know, swabbing complex to increase, increase in the price is because the fundamentals has actually proven to be very good. Uh, we have seen lower stocks. I think USDA recent reports just two days ago has indicated that the swab stocks uh, 20, for the year 2020 and 2021 is going to be much lower. Uh, it's going to be seven year low. So that's actually putting you a point that, you know, in the Swabi complex, is actually a very tight situation. But if you compare with CPO fundamental dynamics, last year, is, is it has been a tremendous year for CPO. Uh, for the fact that, you know, if you look at Malaysia numbers, for the first, I think, first time in 10 years or 13 years, the stocks levels is actually below the 2 million mark. That's, that's you know, um, something that, you know, we, a lot of market observers are saying, hey, that's very bullish. Um, so obviously, when we enter into 2020, 2021, we are coming we are coming in a very tight stocks level. So that's the reason why CPU has been really so strong. Now, if you compare with the price performance with soybean oil, I think CPU has actually rallied uh, even better or even stronger uh, than soybean oil. So that causes the spread, um, you know, to actually narrow it down substantially. Historically speaking, the, the spread between the palm oil and soybean oil usually runs about 100 US dollars. We have seen those uh, spreads actually narrowed to, you know, as you said, as you mentioned, it's close to a dollar now. So again, um, I, I personally reckon this situation will not last. Uh, in fact, you, given time, the spread will actually widen back again. In order for it to do that, and I, I believe so in this couple of days, actually the, the spread has actually uh, widened. Um, no, for the, the reason I'm saying why the spread eventually will widen is that you know um, a lot of market observers will, will notice that if you have a cheaper bean oil compared to palm oil, some of the market, uh, especially the buyers, will actually switch their preference over to soybean oil instead of CPO. So eventually, they will drive up the spread again. Um, it has been a market convention and it's a norm in the market that CPO and soybean oil trades on a premium, which means that soybean oil is usually more expensive than palm oil. So right now we are in a situation whereby both the products are equally you know, competitive and there's certain instances where soybean oil is actually cheaper. Um, no, it, it does make sense, but this situation will not last long. So as long as the fundamental dynamics starts to change, uh, you know, like yesterday overnight, we have seen soybean oil in, in Chicago has actually rallied uh, you know, close to 3%, but today's CPU is actually down by almost uh, 2%. So definitely the spread is going to widen again. Um, so like I say, I think as a trader in the market, you know, um, I believe that what we are seeing the spread to narrow, it will, it will just be a short term moment. After that, eventually on the longer term run, um, I still believe that the spread will try to go back to its revert back to its mean average, which is about 100 US dollars uh, premium. So uh, uh, as a trader, I think it's a very good opportunity. If you are doing cross trading in the uh, inter-commodity, you should be trying to long soybean oil and short CPO uh, whenever the spread narrows. So I think it's a, it's a very good opportunity right now. Yeah, so traders should uh, look out for the trading opportunities in the uh, BMD crude palm oil and also CBOT soybean oil market. Okay, so to our audience who are interested to trade the BMD crude palm oil and CBOT soybean oil or even any greens futures products, you can actually uh, open a futures trading account with Philip Futures entirely online in the comfort of your own home. No more hassle of coming to our office or documents career. All you have to do is just go to our website at uh, www.philipfutures.com.my and look out for online account opening banner on the main page. Okay, so for more details, you can even drop us a message on Facebook and our representative will get back to you. Okay, so lastly, before we end the podcast for today, one last question for you, David. After discussing the potential opportunities in the palm oil market, what are the key risk factors in 2021 that would impact the Malaysia crude palm oil market? Okay, um, there's several risk factors that we have to pay particular attention to this year. Um, in terms of prices, I think, you know, uh, as I highlighted earlier, the risk of production pattern, the stock levels plays a very important role. Uh, again, I like to reiterate, uh, you know, we are in a situation whereby we are facing a very tight stocks uh, in Malaysia. Uh, for the first time, we are seeing numbers below 2 million uh, as the stock levels. That's, that's uh, uncalled for. Um, so I think, again, crucial to watch out how production is going to play out in the next uh, 
two to three months down the road, uh, whether are we seeing production to increase or decrease? If we are seeing production to increase, likely prices is not going to go up. Um, and I think demand risk still remains very relevant. So we've seen this, especially this month, January, where uh, Malaysia has started to introduce back the export tax. So we start to see prices start to adjust back on the downside. So demand is still very important. And obviously, it also ties down to your global economy, how the global economy is going to go doing, is it going to do better than 2020? You know, it's, it still remain a question. Uh, but obviously, I think a lot of people are, are a bit more optimistic given that, you know, uh, we have vaccine rollout that's on the way and, you know, uh, the global pandemic uh, is probably going to uh, be soft or probably going to, you know, the impact is going to be moderated this year. So um, I, I think that's that's something to watch out. Um, the production risk and the demand risk is something to watch out, uh, especially when you look at prices this year. Um, now, as the industry as a whole, um, a lot of people say biofuel demand will come back. Um, personally, I think biofuel is always very relevant if crude oil price is high. Uh, we have seen a collapse in crude oil price last year. That because of a global pandemic. Um, this year is slightly different. Obviously, we have seen WTI prices has, and brand prices have started to, to gain a bit of strength. Um, the question is whether those strengths can last. And in this kind of environment, low price environment is, is always not a good thing for biofuel producers because you know, even at $50 crude oil price, it's not much of margin that they can get from blending palm oil and crude oil. So you know, we need to see higher prices than only we can justify to use palm oil to blend with crude oil. Right now, we don't see that. So I, I think biofuel really dependent on government measures. So if government don't step in, we don't see of the demand there. So obviously, you know, then CPO prices will, will not have any strength to go higher. Um, and you know, another important risk that we always have to watch out for is government measures. So we have seen last year how you know, um, the, uh, the impact of uh, India banning Malaysia palm. You know, the first three months of last year, we, we literally see like almost close to zero exports, uh, zero exports to India. But that measures totally reverse. Uh, you know, when things start to get better between the inter-government relationship. Um, so government risk is always very important. And I believe that this year is still going to be a major risk that we need to watch out for. Uh, and I think government risk is always centered on, you know, um, what is their tax policy? What is their biofuel policy? Um, so let's see whether, you know, uh, whether Indonesia is going to start with their B35 or B40. You know, in order for them to do that, they need to have policies. So without proper policies, uh, and it's going to create uncertainty in the market. So you know, price is going to be influenced by also government uh, measures and policies. So this is also an ongoing risk that we're seeing in the market. And obviously, we have all, all, all the mid-term issues and longer-term issues like you know, the, the impact of deforestation, the, the bad labeling that's on the palm oil market as a whole. So that is continuous and ongoing. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to touch much on that, but... Uh, as a trader that is watching the market this year, th these are some of the risks that we have to watch out for uh, whenever we are navigating the, this market. Um, so I, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, um, as a trader, you just have to manage your risk. Um, obviously, prices can be very volatile, uh, you know, basically on all the factors I mentioned. Uh, but as a trader, your job is to just minimize and measure your risk well. Um, and obviously, you know, if any of your traders who wants to jump on board, they can obviously get started with you guys uh, and perhaps you guys can give more information. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I agree with your view. So uh, investors should look out for the uh, palm oil stocks level and also the government policies that would affect the palm oil market. Okay, and now we have come to an end for today's podcast. Okay, to our audience out there, if you have any questions and any topics you want us to discuss next week, you can message in the comment box below. Okay, thank you for listening to our podcast and happy trading for the week. Thank you uh, for your time too, David. Thank you. Stay safe. Okay, bye. Bye.